Hello and welcome back, everybody. Today in geometry, we are going to be studying uh, section 19.2, which is going to be on pyramids. So prior to this, uh, we define what is a prism. Uh, and then also, we also talked about the cross sections. Uh, that was like one of those key terminologies, uh, which hopefully you remember from a while ago. So uh, to define a pyramid, uh, this is basically going to be our formal definition over here. Okay. So a pyramid, uh, where if you have a base, uh, which we go ahead and call R, and a vertex, uh, we're going to go ahead and call V, is supposed to be the union of all of the segments BV, where B is going to be in R. Uh, and note that base R is supposed to be a polygon. So here, uh, what I did was I kind of drew a plane on the bottom over here, and that's where we're going to put our uh, where we're going to put our uh, base R. So base R uh, can be some any kind of polygon. So let me just go ahead and kind of arbitrarily draw one. So here maybe we can have like say a hexagon or something like that. So something with six sides. Now uh, that in this case is going to be our base R. Uh, then we have a point that is going to be not on the plane. We're going to go ahead and call that V right there. So V is basically kind of like the uh, vertex in this case. Um, and what's going to happen is for this uh, polygon, uh, we're going to have any point uh, in there. We're just going to go ahead and call B. So B is going to be uh, a point that's in the uh, region R. And we're going to go ahead and create a segment from B all the way to V then. Now, the union of all of those points that's going to be inside R, we'll call B, is going to then form, a, uh, form our uh, pyramid. So uh, in our case, uh, then that means that we can kind of like, you know, see how the shape of it goes if we kind of take the endpoints of it uh, and then connect it all together. And as a result, uh, you can see then this prism that is going to be created like this. Okay, so that right there is going to be our pyramid. Now, there are specific types of pyramid. Uh, so in this case, uh, we are looking at a base where the polygon is going to be a hexagon. Uh, but we can uh, start with something a little bit simpler, just so then that way we can grasp what's happening. So let's go ahead and look below to uh, see the simple example. So here you can see our most generic pyramid is that whenever we have a base, that is going to be a, um, it's going to be a triangle because that's the smallest uh, polygon that's possible. Now, um, from there, what we'll do is we're going to create cross sections uh, by slicing uh, a, I guess, kind of like a, the, uh, the pyramid um, horizontally so that it is parallel to the base. So you can see we have three different triangles right there. We have A, pri a double prime, B double prime, and C double prime over there on the bottom. Let me kind of underline it. So here's A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. That right there, that triangular region makes the base of the pyramid. Then if I cut a cross section, basically something that is parallel to the base, uh, then the result is that we have another uh, pair. Um, we also have another a pyramid, um, not pyramid, a uh, triangle over there. And then if I cut from above, you can see that there is another triangle. So all of these cross sections are going to be triangular regions. Now, the one thing you should note is that, uh, well, you probably guessed it, all of these cross sections, they should be uh, similar to each other, meaning that um, they are proportional. And in terms of proof of it, uh, we can definitely do that by creating triangles in the uh, underneath uh, to see how that actually works out. But more importantly, because these uh, triangles are most likely going to be similar, which we'll be uh, proving in just a little bit, uh, then that means that their areas are going to have some sort of proportionality. And that's what we're going to be uh, trying to discover today. So let's go ahead and say the following then. Let's say for this pyramid, uh, there is a, a specific height from the very top, V, all the way to the very bottom, A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. So we're going to say that the total height of the pyramid is going to be H. Then after that, I am going to look at uh, the height of the pyramid to the first cross section, and we're going to go ahead and call that K. And I'd like to think that uh, because of where H is, because of where K is, those two triangles, A, B, C, and also A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime, those two triangles, they're going to have some sort of proportionality uh, that are, that's going to be related to K and H. So that's what we're going to try to figure out today. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is, uh, as you notice for the pyramid, 
Uh, I have also introduced the altitude because that right there is pretty essential to this since we're talking about the height then in this case, okay? So um, here you can see the black triangle uh, going down right down the middle. Um, that right there is going to form a right triangle then as a result with uh, some of the sides. So the first triangle that I want you to focus on is the one that's over here uh, in this case over here. So this triangle, uh, that triangle is going to be located inside right there. So I don't know if you guys can kind of see it. Uh, let me see if I can use maybe like say a different color right there. Um, that is going to be this guy over here. Okay, so that's the triangle that I'm referring to. Okay, so drawing that triangle out on the right hand, uh, on the left hand side, this is basically what it looks like. Now that black triangle, uh, which I really should have used black over here, so let me go ahead and do that right now. Um, you should see that uh, the triangle that I have, according to the cross sections, uh, you can see what K is going to be and you can see where H is going to be. Uh, more importantly, because K and H are supposed to be altitudes, then that means uh, then that uh, that means that we have some right angles that are formed, and that's going to be right here and also right here. Uh, those two triangles definitely look like they're going to be uh, similar to each other. So um, let me go ahead and uh, give another point in there. So then, just to make things a little bit easier, so let's go ahead and say that from V to the intersection of the first triangle, we'll go ahead and call that P right there. And then uh, the intersection between the, uh, let's see, the intersection between the base triangle and also, um, let's see, the uh, VP right there. Um, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I'm looking for the altitude from V all the way to uh, the bottom triangle. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call that VP right there. So then that means uh, P is located right here. And that means that P double prime is located right there, where P double prime is going to be uh, that piece right in the bottom, where the altitude is going to be. Okay, but anyhow, going back to this picture over here, uh, we should be able to see that these two triangles are going to be similar to each other uh, by the AA corollary because you can see that they both have right angles. And also, uh, because over here, they share angle V over here. So that means that these two triangles are similar to each other. And then that means that these guys right here, AP and A, P, uh, A double prime, P double prime, uh, these two sides are going to be parallel to each other. Okay, so uh, then you can go ahead and do that for all the sides. So you can see how all the cross sections are supposed to be parallel uh, to each other and all the way to the bottom of the base. But the part that I'm more concerned about is actually trying to relate the proportionality of K and H to those triangles. According to the triangle that we just drew right there, and because they are similar to each other, then we can also say the following then. VA over VA double prime is going to be equal to K divided by H. Okay, so uh, that's the first part of it. Now, once we're done with this part, what we're going to do is we're going to move out to uh, another triangle. Uh, for this triangle, it's going to be the back side of it. So hopefully you can kind of see it. Uh, if I can kind of like, you know, not butcher it with like two different colors. Uh, I am looking at now the triangle that is over here. So the back side over here, so V A prime B prime. Okay, so the triangle that's in the back. So that's where this guy is over here. So V A uh, double prime B double prime, and then V A and B. Okay, um, we know from earlier that um, these two triangles uh, are most likely going to be similar to each other as well. So we're just going to go ahead and show that right here. Uh, let's see here. What do we know? Well, remember we said that A B right uh, should be parallel to A double prime B double prime because remember these are cross sections and also the base. So, so when you cut them, they should be parallel to each other. So that's why we can put those uh, parallel lines right there. If those two sides are going to be parallel to each other, then that means that uh, by using P A I or sorry P uh, P C A, then that means this angle right here should be congruent to this angle right here, and there and finally angle V is going to be congruent to itself. So from this picture by A A corollary, these two triangles are going to be similar to each other, and that means now we can set up another proportionality. Okay, uh, then here is going to be the part that I want. So V A divided by V a double prime is going to be equal to um, AB and then divided by A double prime B double prime. Okay, so now uh, we can go ahead and link the two together. 
going back to my first triangle, which we showed this proportionality, and going to this triangle where we showed this proportionality, you'll note that they both have VA over VA double prime. And so then that means that AB divided by A double prime B double prime is going to be equal to K over H. And right there, that's going to be our key right there. Okay. Uh, as soon as I show that two sides ratio is going to be k and h, then that means that I can show that their areas are going to be proportional by squaring both sides then. So going back to chapter uh, 12, right, uh, because this is true, and in addition to that, remember how we said uh, since the triangle ABC is going to be similar to triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime, and also A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, uh, because they're all parallel to each other, then combining these two together, uh, using the theorem back in chapter 12, then we can say that the area of triangle ABC divided by the area of triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, is going to be equal to K squared divided by H squared, because uh, you know the squaring of the sides of the ratio is going to give you the proportionality of the area then, okay? So in conclusion right here, here's the theorem then, okay? In any pyramid, and let me just go ahead and uh, you know use a better pen for this one. Uh, so in any so theorem nineteen five says the following then: in any pyramid, the ratio of the cross section to the area of the base. So that means the red triangle, which is a cross section, to the blue triangle, which is going to be the base, is going to be k squared divided by h squared, where h is supposed to be the altitude of the entire pyramid. So you can see on the side right here, h is the height of the pyramid. Uh, and k is going to be the distance from the vertex to the plane of the cross section. So here is going to be k then. So that's exactly what we just derived over there. So area of triangle ABC divided by the area of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is going to be equal to k squared divided by h squared. So now more importantly, let's go ahead and see if we can utilize this theorem uh, so you can see how it works out then. So here in this problem, we say that the ratio between the areas of a pyramid and a certain cross-section is supposed to be 121 uh, divided by 225, while the distance between them is going to be 56. Find the height of the pyramid. So let's go ahead and draw this picture so you can see what's happening. So we have a pyramid. Okay, so as we said, we have a pyramid right here where that's going to be, I guess, our bottom triangle. Uh, and then a cross section is going to be right above it, and it's going to be something like this then, okay? Uh, and I guess now I'm going to go ahead and connect the two so you can see the entire pyramid. So this is basically what it looks like then, okay? So the area of one triangle divided by the area of the other triangle, well, the proportionality is supposed to be 121 uh, to 225. So since the area's ratio is going to be this, then that's like saying k squared uh, to h squared is going to be this then. So then that means according to our theorem, uh, where by the way, uh, I am going to say that this is going to be k right here, and this is going to be h right here, okay? Uh, then we know the following is going to be true then. So k divided by h is equal to 11 over 25. And where did I get that from? Well, because this guy right here, 121, that's 11 squared. And then 225 over here, that is going to be 15 squared, right? So you can see here's k squared, and then this is going to be h squared, okay? Uh, k squared, and I don't know why that's not coming out, k squared, and then this is going to be h squared. So there it is. That's going to be our setup for now. Okay, And uh, according to this problem, I am also given that the distance between the two cross sections is supposed to be 56. So then that means that the distance from this triangle to this triangle, that is where the 56 come from. With respect to our variable, then that means that k plus 56 is equal to h then, because k is going to be the top to that pyramid, the blue pyramid, whereas h is going to be from the very top to the bottom pyramid. So the difference between them has to be that 56. Well, now that we have all of this, and now that we also have this, uh, the last part says find the height of the pyramid. So that means I need to figure out what h is equal to. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and make a substitution. 
So here we can solve for k, which is equal to h minus 56, and make that substitution into this equation. So h minus 56 divided by h is equal to 11 over 25. So now we can go ahead and cross multiply and solve for h, hopefully. So 25 multiplied by h minus 56 is equal to 11 times h. So 25h minus, uh, I'm gonna just going to go ahead and write, and write 25 multiplied by 56 is equal to 11h. Um, let's see, we can go ahead and move some terms over. Uh, if I move the h over to the left, I am going to see 14h. And if I move uh, to the right the other stuff, that's going to be 25 multiplied by 56. Now we divide everything by 14, and then we are going to be home free then. So let's see, 56 and then 14, they go into each other. Uh, let's see, I do believe it's supposed to be 4 times, so that means that 25 multiplied by 4 is equal to 100. So the height of this pyramid is then equal to 100 then. All right, well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time then. Have a good one. Bye-bye.